This is the Rotec wireless digital microscope. Let's take it out of the box. And here's what's in the box. They give you a quick guide, which is useful for getting it set up. The full instruction manual, the microscope itself, USB cable, which is USB to micro USB. I know I said this was wireless. We'll get to that in a moment. You get a stand for the microscope right here. It's adjustable. It's got like a ball mount on each end. This will tilt also. And then you just tighten a little wing nut there. And they call this part a base. I suppose you could put whatever you want to uh, photograph in there and it may provide for a better uh, picture quality by doing that. So just to give you an idea, you could set it up like this on the stand, pointing into that where you could put whatever specimen that you'd like to photograph with this. Now, like I said, this is wireless. It can hook up via Wi-Fi and you have tons of options with that. It'll work with PC, it'll work with Windows Vista 7, 8, and 10. It'll work with the Mac OS as well. Or, if you don't want to hook up to the computer, you can use your smartphone, whether you have a an Apple or an Android, there's an app for it, either way, and you can connect to it that way. The way the Wi-Fi works is this microscope will produce its own uh, SSID, or its own wireless network. And then on your device, whatever it is, you go into your wireless network list, find this, and connect to it, and then it has a direct transfer wirelessly to that particular device, whether it be a phone or a tablet or a computer or anything like that. If you're using a computer, you can also hook it up with the USB cable, which is what I'm going to be doing today. And this also doubles as a charging cable, which will plug in right over here. Uh, if I take the microscope over here and hold the power button down, you can see that it lights up. There are eight LEDs in there to help illuminate your subject. So if you get that, just to give you an idea what that would do. And there's a little wheel here that you can adjust to dim that or make it brighter or anything you want. It doesn't go extremely bright, but it's really not necessary for something like this at such a close range. Too much light in this case would actually wash out the picture. So you can adjust it as such. On the microscope itself, you have this wheel here that will adjust the focus of it. And over here are your zoom buttons in and out as such, like that. The battery in here lasts approximately three hours and takes approximately three hours to recharge if you're going to be using the LED lights. So now I'm going to go ahead and get this hooked up to the computer. So you can see this is plug and play. I simply plugged it in and it's going to go ahead and get everything set up for us. Uh, in the manual, it describes how to get this file here. It is a self-contained application. So you don't need to install a program. It just runs natively as an application right on your computer like that, at least on the PC side. The Mac is going to be different, of course. Okay, what we're seeing there is what the microscope is seeing. If you look, I have like a screwdriver bit in there, and the microscope is looking at that nice and closely. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and uh, photograph a few things. I'll record video and I'll do a voiceover for that so you can see. There is going to be some fumbling around with the uh, focus on it and the zoom in that. So uh, you will be seeing that. Uh, this can also record audio. It says it'll use an audio device already on your computer. Like for example, this has a webcam. This allegedly can record right from that because when I loaded the software up it actually showed me because there's a webcam right there and right under settings here I selected the microscope right there so I'm gonna go ahead and record a few things with this and I'll voice over that and then we'll wrap this up okay this is the live feed from the microscope this is the very first recording I did I made a number of different clips you can see how I'm playing with the focus on it and if you watch the left the blue there you see how that's in very sharp focus and then as I adjusted the screwdriver tip itself comes better into focus there And over here is a still shot that the microscope took of the screwdriver bit. Over here is a pencil. Did you see that flat spot on it? 
That's like if you take the pencil and move it left to right with the lead like that to kind of rub over something. That's what I was showing there. And you can also see the point on it and how blunt a sharp point actually is. Over here is a memory chip. These are the little chips on the uh, package here. You can see all the traces on the circuit board, even the dust on it, the edge connectors. And as I pan over, here's a label that's on it right over there. And if I move it the other direction over here, you can see that's a label that you actually can read pretty well uh, with the naked eye. But it did do a pretty good job of focusing that in. And here is a still shot of one of the chips on there. Over here we have a processor, an old Intel processor. And you'll see what kind right over here in just a second. It's an old Celeron 700 megahertz processor. 66 megahertz front side bus. And there's a still shot of the Intel logo. What could this be? This is actually black pepper ground black pepper that you would have in a pepper shaker on an average table. I just shook that on the surface there and you can see it's actually not all black. You can see the kind of white specks in there and that's a still shot of that. Over here is the screw starting out of focus and you can see how sharp you can actually get the focus on it. Once I get that dialed in right there, you can see how it's absolutely sharp, especially on the head of the screw and you can see all of the threads right there and over here is the head of the screw you can see it's actually a little bit stripped out in the upper left corner there that's a still shot of it and lastly over here we have the ROHS logo that was on the back of the instruction manual so hopefully that gave you an idea of what an out-of-box experience would be with this for someone who has never used such a device before, uh, there's a bit of fumbling around and definitely a bit of a learning curve as far as how to get the best shot. Uh, of course, I was just dealing with a crummy old laptop with uh, not so great screen on it, so maybe a lot of those were not in absolutely sharp focus, but that was about the best I could get out of it. If I had a nice big screen, of course, that would give me a much better indication of if it's in focus or not. Uh, things like that, but out of the box, it certainly worked flawlessly, and there's all kinds of other settings and things that you can play around with to help you get the very best quality out of your Rotec microscope. So definitely a pretty cool starter microscope. Um, it definitely worked for what it's supposed to. Definitely did the trick, and of course, you know, you could get bacteria and other stuff put in here, and you know, zoom in on that and, you know, get a nice shot of that in there. And, you know, this would uh, certainly be a great toy for a kid to get started with. And as you saw with the chips before, that'll definitely help you read what's on them if uh, a magnifying glass won't do the trick for you. So definitely a nice little Wi-Fi digital microscope from Rotec. If you'd like to purchase this item, I'll leave a link in the video description where you can find it available for sale on Amazon. Thanks for watching. Make sure you click like, make sure you click subscribe, and take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.